Muscle actions are categorized as isometric, concentric or eccentric. Isometric muscle actions involve no change in muscle length. Concentric muscle actions involve the shortening of muscle tissue. And eccentric muscle actions involve the active lengthening of muscle tissue against an external force or load. During eccentric work, such as downhill running, landing movements or deceleration, the muscle functions as a shock absorber, whereby the muscular tenderness system lengthens and absorbs mechanical energy, which can be dissipated as heat. The ability to dissipate mechanical energy is important for protecting passive anatomical structures. During rapid and cyclic movements, the absorbed energy during the eccentric action can be temporarily stored as elastic energy and used during an immediate concentric action. This phenomenon, called the stretch shortening cycle, allows the muscle to act like a spring, whereby the kinetic energy generated enables faster movements to be achieved. Therefore, eccentric strength training that focuses on the lengthening phase of the muscle actions is beneficial for its potential to enhance muscle hypertrophy, strength, power and athletic performance, as well as preventing and rehabilitating sports-related injuries. And because eccentric exercise is characterised by a greater efficiency and force production than isometric and concentric exercises, it can be an appropriate form of training for special populations. In the article, published in the journal Applied Sciences, titled Eccentric Resistance Training, a Methodological Proposal of Eccentric Muscle Exercise Classification Based on Eccentric Complexity, Training Objectives, Methods and Intensity, by Carlos and colleagues, outline four classifications of eccentric resistance training, termed basic, moderate, submaximal, maximal and supramaximal. Understanding the proposed characteristics involved at each level can help guide eccentric exercise prescription. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a summary of the characteristics involved at each of the four levels. First of all, low intensity basic eccentric exercise is recommended for athletes returning from injury, young athletes, older adults, and special populations. For example, those undertaking cardiac rehabilitation. The intensity for eccentric exercise at this level is suggested to be 4 out of 10 on the rating of perceived exertion scale, with body weight being used to perform low impact plyometrics, for example, pogo variations and basic or adapted body weight eccentrics. And if load is used, this is suggested to be up to 40% of the concentric phase 1RM. Moving on to moderate eccentric exercises, where objectives at this level can include injury prevention, advanced rehabilitation, as well as to enhance sport performance for those with lower training ages or who perform in the lower competitive divisions. The intensity at this level is suggested to be between 4 and 6 out of 10 on the RPE scale, with body weight being used to perform a variety of low to moderate impact plyometrics and body weight eccentric exercises such as Adapted Nordics and Copenhagen's, as well as accelerations and decelerations. Also, moderate to submaximal eccentric overload may be achieved with bands or dumbbells slash barbells, where the load used is suggested to be between 40 to 60% of the concentric phase 1RM. Moving on to submaximal eccentric exercises, where the objectives at this level can include returning to sport, injury prevention, muscle development, as well as to enhance sports performance. The intensity at this level is suggested to be between 6 and 8 out of 10 on the RP scale, with body weight being used to perform medium to high impact plyometric and landing movements. Medium to complex single and multi-joint exercises are also suggested at this level, using loads between 60 and 90% of the concentric phase 1RM. The use of specific equipment such as flywheels and ice kinetic dynamometers can also feature at this level. To maximize the benefits of eccentric exercise at this level, it is recommended for those who are experienced strength trainers and have already attained a high level of strength. Lastly, regarding maximal or supramaximal eccentric exercises, 
The objective here is to stimulate the recruitment of high threshold motor units with the purpose of ultimately enhancing sports performance. The intensity at this level is suggested to be 8 or more on the RP scale, with body weight being used to execute complex single and multi-joint high impact plyometrics, as well as the use of accentuated eccentric loading, using loads of 90 up to 140% of the concentric phase 1RM. Therefore, due to the intense nature of eccentric exercises at this level, it's only suggested for those who are experienced strength trainers and higher level athletes. And that concludes the summary of the four levels proposed by Carlos and colleagues, which offers a systematic approach of classifying eccentric exercises based on complexity, objectives, methods and intensity. As always, I recommend you go and check out the full article surrounding the nuances of eccentric exercise prescription. The link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.